Hi everybody, welcome back to Bible in a Year. My name is Natalie and today we're on day 151. I'm so glad that you're here today and I hope your day is going great. We're going to be reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 38, Matthew chapter 26, but only verses 36 through 75. And then we're going to close out the day with Psalm chapter 89, verses 19 through 29. So let's get started with Deuteronomy chapter 9. Here we go. Hear Israel, you are to pass over the Jordan today to go in to dispossess nations greater and mightier than yourself, city or, uh, cities great and fortified up to the sky, a people great and tall, the sons of the Anakim, whom you know and whom you have heard say, who can stand before the sons of Anak? Know therefore today that Yahweh your God is he who goes before you as a devouring fire. He will destroy them and will bring them down before you. So you shall drive them out and make them perish quickly as Yahweh has spoken to you. Don't say in your heart, after Yahweh your God has thrust them out from before you, for my righteousness Yahweh has brought me in to possess this land, because Yahweh drives them out before you, because of the wickedness of these nations, not for your righteousness or for the uprightness of your heart do you go in to possess their land, but for the wickedness of these nations Yahweh your God does drive them out. From before you, and that he may establish the word which Yahweh swore to your fathers, to Abraham, and to Isaac, and to Jacob. Know therefore that Yahweh your God doesn't give you this good land to possess for your righteousness, for you are a stiff-necked people. Remember and don't forget how you provoked Yahweh your God to wrath in the wilderness. From the day that you left the land of Egypt until you came to this place, you have been rebellious against Yahweh. Also, in Horeb, you provoked Yahweh to wrath, and Yahweh was angry with you to destroy you. When I had gone up onto the mountain to receive the stone tablets, even the tablets of the covenant which Yahweh made with you, then I stayed on the mountain forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water. Yahweh delivered to me the two stone tablets written with God's finger. On them were all the words which Yahweh spoke with you on the mountain out of the middle of the fire in the, in the day of the assembly. It came to pass at the end of forty days and forty nights that Yahweh gave me the two stone tablets, even the tablets of the covenant. Yahweh said to me, Arise, get down quickly from here, for your people whom you have brought out of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have quickly turned away from the way which I commanded them. They have made a molten image for themselves. Furthermore, Yahweh spoke to me, saying, I have seen these people, and behold, they are stiff-necked people. Leave me alone, that I may destroy them and blot them out, and blot out their name from under the sky, and I will make of you a nation mightier and greater than they. So I turned and came down from the mountain, and the mountain was burning with fire. The two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. I looked, and behold, you had sinned against Yahweh your God. You had made yourselves a molded calf. You had quickly turned away from the way which Yahweh had commanded you. I took hold of the two tablets and threw them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. I fell down before Yahweh, as at the first, forty days and forty nights. I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all your sin which you sinned in doing that which was evil in Yahweh's sight to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure with which Yahweh was angry against you to destroy you. But Yahweh listened to me that time also. 
Yahweh was angry enough with Aaron to destroy him. I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. I took your sin, the calf which you had made, and burned it with fire and crushed it, grinding it very small until it was as fine as dust. I threw its dust into the brook that descended out of the mountain at, at out of the mountain. At Tabera, at Mesa, and at Kibroth Hadava, you provoked Yahweh to wrath. When Yahweh sent you from Kadesh Barnea, saying, Go up and possess the land which I have given you, you rebelled against the commandment of Yahweh your God, and you didn't believe him or listen to his voice. You have been rebellious against Yahweh from the day that I knew you. So I fell down before Yahweh the forty days and forty nights that I fell down because Yahweh had said he would destroy you. I prayed to Yahweh and said, Lord Yahweh, don't destroy your people and your inheritance that you have redeemed through your greatness that you have brought out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't look at the stubbornness of this people, nor at their wickedness, nor at their sin, lest the land you brought us out from say, because Yahweh was not able to bring them into the land which he promised to them, and because he hated them, he has brought them out to kill them in the wilderness. Yet they are your people and your inheritance, which you brought out by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Wow, so that chapter, um, that really puts everything into perspective. Again, back in Numbers, you know, we can read the history and how it's broken up into chapters. And, you know, by the time we get to chapter, I don't know, seven, we might have kind of forgotten what was in chapter two. And this chapter right here, chapter nine... That really gives a good picture as to how literally rebellious the people were against God and how patient God was trying to be and how Moses um, interceded for, or to God, you know, to get in the middle of the people and God. It's a good chapter. I think I might read that again later. So Isaiah chapter 38. All right. In those days, Hezekiah was sick and near death. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amaz, came to him and said to him, Yahweh says, Set your house in order, for you will die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to Yahweh and said, Remember now, Yahweh, I beg you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in your sight. Then Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then Yahweh's word came to Isaiah, saying, Go and tell Hezekiah, Yahweh, the God of David, your father, says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. And behold, I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. This shall be a sign to you from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do this thing that he has spoken. Behold, I will cause the shadow on the sundial, which has gone down on the sundial of Ahaz with the sun, to return backward ten steps. So the sun returned ten steps on the sundial on which it had gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and had recovered of his sickness. I said, In the middle of my life, I go into the gates of Sheol. 
I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said, I won't see Yah, Yah in the land of the living. I will see man no more with the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling is removed and is carried away from me like a shepherd's tent. I have rolled up my life like a weaver. He will cut me off from the loom. From day even to night, you will make an end of me. I waited patiently until morning. He breaks all my bones like a lion. From day even to night, you will make an end of me. I chattered like a swallow or a crane. I moaned like a dove. My eyes weaken looking upward. Lord, I am oppressed. Be my security. What will I say? He has both spoken to me and himself has done it. I will walk carefully all my years because of the anguish of my soul. Lord, men live by these things, and my spirit finds life in all of them. You restore me and cause me to live. Behold, for peace I had great anguish, but you have in love for my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Shoal can't praise you. Death can't celebrate you. Those who go down into the pit can't hope for your truth. The living, the living, he shall praise you as I do today. The Father shall make known your truth to the children. Yahweh will save me. Therefore, we will sing my songs with stringed instruments all the days of our life in Yahweh's house. Now Isaiah had said, Let them take a cake of figs and lay it for a poultice on the boil, and he shall recover. Hezekiah also had said, What is the sign that I will go up to Yahweh's house? We'll read more tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Matthew 26 verses 36 through 75. I was a little distracted by a neighbor outside. I'm sorry about that, folks. Okay. Matthew 26, 36 through 75. Just looking for my marker at 75. Okay. I don't know if you can hear the commotion outside. I'm, I'm really sorry. I am filming this on a Saturday afternoon, and there is a lot going on outside. So um, hopefully you can't hear it too much. All right, here we go. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be sorrowful and severely trouble, troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here. And watch me. He went forward a little, fell on his face, and prayed, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass away from me. Nevertheless, not what I desire, but what you desire. He came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and said to Peter, What? Couldn't you watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you don't enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying, My father, if this cup can't pass away from me unless I drink it, your desire be done. He came again and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. He left them again and went away and prayed a third time, saying the same words. 
Then he came to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let's get going. Behold, he who betrays me is at hand. While he was still speaking, behold, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he who betrayed him had given them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him. Immediately he came to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, why are you here? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him. Behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all those who take the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think that I couldn't ask my father, and he would even now send me more than twelve legions of angels? How then would the scripture be fulfilled that it must be so? In that hour, Jesus said to the multitudes, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? I sat daily in the temple teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But all this has happened, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had taken Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were gathered together. But Peter followed him from a distance to the court of the high priest and entered in and sat with the officers to see the end. Now the chief priests, the elders, and the whole council sought, uh, sought false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, and they found none. Even though many false witnesses came forward, they found none. But at least two false witnesses came forward and said, This man said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to him, Have you no answer? What is this that these testify against you? But Jesus stayed silent. The high priest answered him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus said to him, You have said so. Nevertheless, I tell you, after this, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of the sky. Then the high priest tore his clothing, saying, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Behold, now you have heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He is worthy of death. Then they spat in his face and beat him with their fists. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who hit you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the court, and a, ma a maid came to him, saying, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I don't know what you are talking about. When he had gone out onto the porch, someone else saw him and said to those who were there, This man also was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again he denied it with an oath, I don't know the man. After a little while, those who stood by came and said to Peter, Surely you are also one of them, for your speech makes you known. Then he began to curse and swear, I don't know the man. Immediately the rooster crowed, and Peter remembered the word which Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. 
And then he went out and wept bitterly. Oh, this is going to start getting to some rough reading. I am quite impressed by um, when two false witnesses came forward to testify against Jesus. And they say what they have to say. And then the high priest looks at Jesus and wants him basically to um, defend himself. Have you nothing or have you no answer? And verse 63, but Jesus stayed silent. That's always made such an impression on me. Because when people come at us, I mean, not that I'm Jesus, but it's just a, a lesson that I try and learn from is that when people are coming at me and they're coming at me with things that are not true, um, sometimes it might be better as we learn in this lesson to just be silent. My mom told me once, Give someone, this is probably inappropriate, and I apologize if it is, but I, I, I am older, and back in the day, we, we learned things differently. <laughs> but she did teach me once, give somebody a rope long enough, and they will hang themselves. Not literally, meaning, stay silent. Don't always have that knee-jerk reaction. And whoever is coming at me, they'll eventually trip themselves up. Okay. Psalm chapter 89. Can you hear Fred giving kisses? Hey, Freddy. You give kisses to everybody? Say hello, friends. You give kisses? <laughs> Psalm 89, uh, verses 19 through 29. Oh my goodness. 19 through 29. There we go. Okay. <laughs> then you spoke in vision to your saints and said, I have given strength to the warrior. I have exalted a young man from the people. I have found David, my servant. I have anointed him with my holy oil, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm will also strengthen him. No enemy will tax him. No wicked man will oppress him. I will beat down his adversaries before him and strike those who hate him. But my faithfulness and my loving kindness will be with him. In my name, his horn will be exalted. I will set his hand also on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will call to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. I will also appoint him my firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. I will keep my loving kindness for him forevermore. My covenant will stand firm with him. I will also make his offspring endure forever and his throne as the days of heaven. Wow. Whoa, boy, guys, this was a lot of information today. It was a good day. I'm so thankful that you were here on this day 151. I hope you have the most fantastic day today. Think about the words that we read. Um, yeah. And coming in on Matthew, um, this part gets pretty heavy for me, and I'm going to try not to insert a lot of my emotion into it and just get through the reading 
Um, I will do the very best I can, but it is gonna it is gonna start to get pretty heavy. And um, everything that Jesus did for us, and that He is the new covenant. All these things that we read about in the Old Testament. That's what God would have for us. That's what He wanted for us. And we just couldn't handle it. And He realized that. And in His compassion and loving kindness for us, He sent Jesus for a brand new covenant. And uh, we're going to be reading a little... A little more about that in the next few days. So please come on back for tomorrow, which will be day 152. Have a fantastic day today, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.